Let's look at some of the sampler track functionality found in Cubase 11. Looking at the sampler track, we can see that there's new color schemes and a new user interface which allows you to see functions whether they're active or inactive. To add samplers to the sampler track, we can drag and drop an audio file from the project window, from the media bay, or directly from a MIDI part that's routed to a virtual instrument. I can now immediately play the sample. If I wanted to normalize within the sampler track, I could click on the normalize button and we could increase the gain of the sample. To trim samples, I could select a range and use the trim sample to choose a new start or end of the sample position. New playback algorithms have been incorporated so that we have a standard algorithm, high, best, extreme, or vintage, which mimics vintage 12-bit samplers. When we want to drag a drum loop in, I could just take my drum part, drag it directly into the project, and if I wanted to play it, we could listen to it. And if I play it an octave higher, it's gonna be pitched one octave higher, but play twice as fast. Or an octave lower, half speed. If I wanted this to play back at the same speed, regardless of the pitch, I could enable audio warp. So now as I play back, it'll change the pitch, but keep the same tempo. A new slice section has been added so that we could automatically slice the loop based on different criteria, whether it's transient, grid, transient plus grid, or we could do the slices manually. Once the drum loop here has been sliced, we see a little MIDI icon. I could drag that MIDI icon to the sampler track, and as we double click on it, we could now see all of our audio that's been sliced for us and kind of broken down. So if I wanted to do kind of a quick deconstruction of the drum loop, I could just very scientifically here, just randomly adjust some of my notes. And as we play it, we can have those natural variations to come up and kind of be able to, again, construct or deconstruct loops. Now, this is also very handy if you wanted to do different things like vocal chops. So if I have just a vocal file as a sample. No time to hesitate, it's all been done. You want to have it, you can get enough. And we can have an A-B setting. So if I wanted to switch to an alternate editing with different slices that I've entered in manually, I can now just come here and chop up the vocal. And as we wanted to play. You want to you want to hesitate enough, baby. And this will allow you to come up with new and interesting ideas. There's some interesting monophonic modes that are available as well. So if you wanted to do some glides, we can have this ability. So if I wanted to play back, I could set up glides by holding down the first note and just hitting the second note. If we enable the finger mode, what this is gonna allow us to do, if I play the notes and release the key slightly between each note, it won't do the glide. But if I hold down the first note and then hit the second note, and if I wanted to adjust the speed of that glide, we could do stuff like that. Now, sometimes you notice that as I trigger the second sample, that it's actually, going to play it back from the very beginning of the sample. But if I wanted to do something a little more interesting, we could activate this little function with the two eighth notes in legato mode. So once I do this, the sample will continue to play even if I trigger a different note. The sample will continue to play through the sample. So if I want to do different techniques like this. And you could do like really interesting things with vocals with this. So I had a friend who just sang me a, a little song he wrote very quickly. 
And I just had him sing one single note. So we'll listen to it. I'm singing this phrase for Greg so that he can get what he needs accomplished with this program. And I've loaded that directly into a sample track. And what I'm going to do is just kind of play a melody using my computer keyboard. So I'm going to hold the one note down so that it is in legato. Instead of being one single note. I am singing this phrase for Greg so that he can get what he needs accomplished with this program. This is a recording. And you could just rewrite melodies very, very quickly with that. Now, to make sounds a bit more interesting at times, we may want to employ different filters. So we'll have a wide variety of filter types as well as filter shapes. So let's say if I have just a quick, simple synth sound and I wanted to employ filters, Now, one of the things that we could actually do is kind of an interesting thing. It's a cutoff key follow. So as I play lower notes, there will be less of a filter being opened up. And as I play the pitch higher, the filter will just kind of open up. So as we kind of just play notes starting low. You hear how it gets brighter. Now, one feature request that people had was the ability of being able to make sounds a little more interesting through using LFO. So if I wanted to click on my modulation here, at this point we could see our different LFO settings. So we have two independent LFOs. So I will just kind of turn this on for LFO one for my filter. And as I play a note, <laughs> So this will kind of just automatically adjust a note. So if I want to change it to speed, and let's say if I wanted to change the phase, so if I wanted that to start at the stop of the waveform or the bottom of the waveform, we could do that. We could also have your modulation wheel on your instrument control the the shape so if you wanted to or just be able to adjust the shape manually and these LFOs can be tempo synced as well and sometimes when we want to do this we may want to have the tempo sync actually set to different musical values and sometimes as film composers we often want to have a sound that slowly evolves over time so you could actually go to 16 measures for your LFO. So if you want a sound to like just very slowly evolve, you have those options as well. And let's say I wanted to now just be able to adjust a second LFO for my panning. So we could adjust kind of our two LFOs. So. so now I could just play a chord really quickly. So what was a very simple sound, we could now just come over here and be able to adjust your filter. Now my sampler track could also employ all of our EQs, our channel strip that we're used to seeing in our regular audio channels plus our different insert effects. So at this point, if I wanted to save a preset, instead of saving a specific sampler track preset, I would just save this as a normal track preset. So at this point, we could save a track preset and give it a name. And we could now call this up with all of our samples, all of our effects, our EQs, our, our channel strip, all of those settings automatically preserved so that you have access to that in any other project. 
Now at times you may want to, if you're in very creative sound design modes, you may have a sound that you really like, but you may want to start over from scratch. And if you do that, what we could do is put on this lock button. So every parameter that I've adjusted here, if I wanted to change the source sample, I can drag it over from my media bay and all of those settings will be preserved it will just be using a different source sound that you could utilize. Now, as people are working with this, you may start off and say, okay, I'm doing something and it's very fast, creative, and musical to work with, but I may want to take it to the next level. So at this point, we see these three arrows that point up to the right. I could choose to take my sample that I've created in the sampler track that I've saved as a tr track preset, and I could transfer it directly to Groove Agent, Groove Agent SE, Halion, where I could make my own instruments that I could sell and market for another revenue stream, to Pad Shop 2, or to Backbone. So as you can see, the new sampler track gives you lots of creativity and flexibility to solve many of your production problems.